Today on Up at Noon Live, Metal Gear Solid 5. Does it have the best first hour in video game history? We think so. What do you think? Ryu, you sexy hot dad bod. Look at that bearded old man now. And it's Force Friday. Let's buy some toys for our desk so our significant others don't leave us. Spoilers, they will. It's very cold in here. It's it's like I'm gonna just my nipples are gonna cut right through my jacket. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Altano. This is Max Scoville. Hey, how how's doing, it Max? going? I'm okay. I'm sick. Sick with diseases that I caught from you fine people at PAX That's last right. weekend. And I'm tired, so this is our new buddy cop film, Sick and Tired. Sick and tired of all the crime on the streets. We're getting out there, we're gonna mess it all up. Uh this is this is up at noon live. This is our weekly comedy variety show right here on IGN. You can also watch us on Twitch, YouTube, uh, on your PS4, your Xbox One, your Roku. Um, probably a bunch of other things. I like I, we're everywhere. That's really what this is all about. Uh, if you're watching the show right now, I want to use the hashtag up at noon uh, or you, comment on the show. Talk to us. We'll be here all uh, for the next hour, hanging out with you. But let's get something out of the way right now. I love my job. I love working here. I love Max. I love the studio. I love doing the show. None of us want to be here. None of us want to be in this room right now. We want to be home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be yeah, home yeah. playing Metal Gear yeah. Solid Five. If you're at I your would, job right now watching this... I was trying to be polite. I'm like, I, I, I have a good time at my work. Let's be honest. I want to go know, home and play Metal Gear. Let's be honest. We want to go home and play uh, Metal Gear Solid. Now, a lot of you probably started the game this week. Uh, copies kind of leaked early. I downloaded it and I preloaded it and got it the, the moment it went live at 9 p.m. California time here in San Francisco. Uh, and I noticed something. That that first hour of that game, where we're going to try to stay mostly spoiler free here, is completely insane. So to time out, the first hour of the game pretty much got revealed to you already in the first trailer for the Phantom Pain. Right. Back when we didn't realize it was actually a Metal Gear game, when they yeah. showed it off at the VGAs in 2012, I think. Uh, it's got that weird doctor, and you basically, it's a it's a it's a crazy time. Uh, there's the there's a car accident full of Prozac. Uh, yeah, you get your you get your arm cut off, and then a bunch of stuff made out of fire starts showing up. A lot of Moby Dick references. Yeah, look yep. at that. You get a hook for a hand, and it's just a, it's a it's a really that's not what we're doing yet. That was the wrong the wrong clip. But uh, yeah, the first hour of Metal Gear, it just continues to escalate, right? Yeah. It just gets crazier and crazier. So uh, we want to stay spoiler free on this. I God, I really wish I could just say that there's there's a horse. So we know that that shows it off in the in the first trailer. There is a horse on fire. Okay, we it's can actually say that a, then. it's a Pegasus on fire. Is that what we're calling it? It's a Pegasus. And you shoot it with a shotgun. You shoot it with a shotgun on a mountain. Uh, uh, there's a whale made of fire. Yeah. Uh, there's some pee. There's some butt cheeks. Is there pee? Yeah, there's a little bit of pee. Is there really pee? Yeah. Uh, so we asked you guys, what is the best first hour in a video game? Which video game has the best first hour? Uh, use the hashtag up at noon if you have an answer for that. Laura Dambron says. That's at Laura underscore Dameron says The Last of Us. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Now I, I feel like uh, I feel like Phantom Pain's first hour felt a little bit akin to The mm -hmm. Last of Us, and that it was very like very kind of cinematic and very much like get out of there, get out, yeah. like run, and yeah. then the rest of the game is kind of at a different pace. Yeah. But they kind of basically they try to kind of give you a spoonful of sugar for the tutorial by pretty much being like. Something's after you, so you better hurry up and get through this tutorial. That's right. We won't dock you too many points. Uh, now, Julian Fiocchi, Fiocchi, is that Italian? I should know that. Speaking of Italy, says uh, Metroid Prime. Yes. So, uh, Metroid Prime has an awesome first hour. Every Metroid game does because they give you everything and then they take it all away. They have, they have every single item in that game and then uh, it's gone. So, uh, Gary John Sr. says Uncharted 2, the thing on the train. Yeah, you wake up on a on a train and you have to now climb up it. That's I like that because it's also it's also bookends. Basically, it starts you out and then it does previously, and then it goes this whole flashback, and then you wind up on the train later on in the game. That's right. So uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, you've been playing it like crazy, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people have. Um, it's really there's something special about Metal Gear, and it's always it's always had this. I remember being in in history class in like 11th grade and talking about stuff you could do in you know Metal Gear Solid 2 and being like, yeah, you know what? Uh, there's all this weird stuff in there. There's all these secrets. Did you know if you beat the game on extra hard, you get this thing that does this thing? Or if you go in the vent shaft in this one part, there's a there's a tiki like a big an Easter Island head. Yep. Oh, maybe that's foreshadowing for what the Patriots are all about. And it's like, it's just a lot of weird stuff in there. It's always very and Kojima's always been very good about this. He's had a lot of stuff that isn't explained to you in the game, and we're having this happen at work all the time. Like all this kind of like tons of weird emergent experiences that yeah. have happened. Last night I went on a very a very uh, special covert mission to retrieve a Billy Idol cassette tape because that's a thing you can do in that game. Like I was, I'd already finished the mission that it turns up on, but I backtracked and I was like, I want to listen to Rebel Yell. 
So I had to scope out this whole area, and on the way, I decided that I was going to abduct some donkeys for my base. <laughs> like, you can do all kinds, and I'm like early in the game. I'm 15 hours into that game, and I'm at 5%. Have you tried Fultoning anybody in a shed? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You watch yeah. the balloon slap against you the have top to, and pop. It's great. Yeah. Also, uh, so if you, you try to lift up anything that's too uh You're building a zoo, right? Yeah, I'm trying to base. Do, trying to do a zoo. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to... Honestly, I did not expect the Phantom Pain to be this big. They kind of primed us for this, but the the way in which it kind of doles out what's in there... Mm -hmm. uh, like, you'll you'll liberate a little outpost, and it'll be like, you unlocked a new word to use in your, in your logo. Coward. Like... It's, I don't know, it's cool. Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Five is, is fantastic. I hope you guys are all playing it. It's really, really fun. And it's only going to get more fun as more people play it. That's um, right. Um, so what, tell us the coolest thing you've done in Metal Gear so far. Uh, mine, I think, in the, in the video we did leading up to this, we tried to get a horse into the back of a truck, which is almost impossible. If you can do that, please let us know. Well, horse physics are a little bit odd. Uh, now, here's a funny story. It's really more of a retraction. Uh, Michael Shannon, who plays General Zod mm -hmm. in uh, Man of Steel, and I guess is not really appearing in Dawn of Justice, but had some VO in one of the trailers, uh, he said that uh, in an interview that he, he has flippers now. He, his character suddenly has flippers. In Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, That's he, correct. he said that in an interview. And people ran with it because it came straight out of his mouth. We ran with it here at IGN, yep. uh, the home, you know, home of, uh, of, of video game journalism with the world's biggest video game <laughs> web website. We ran with that. Let's talk about this for a minute. We're not reporting on actual real stuff. We're reporting on a thing a guy said about a fictional character. Yeah. Guess, get this, he was, jo he was joking. He, he doesn't actually have flippers. Mm -hmm. He posted a retraction about that, or he didn't, he didn't post anything. He said in another interview that he made a joke about it and people ran with it, which is sort of like... Yep, that happened. We did that. Our we jobs are just dumb enough that that could have been a real thing. And that's the thing. We're not. This is not Anderson Cooper on the front lines. Yeah. You know, this is not. We are not out in the in the in the in the, just in the dirt and the grime of war. We are. Uh, we get press releases and we read interviews and it says like, if Matt Damon's like, you know, who I want to kiss is Venom from Spider Man, and he said that as a joke. We'd put that in a story because we'd believe it. Because we have to. That's part of our jobs. Our jobs transcend uh, stupidity back to reality so often yep. that we can't tell what's real and what's well, fake. It's, it's also funny because, like, I, and I don't mean to like to belittle, you know, fandom or like, you know, geek culture or whatever. Right. It's because it's it's a hobby. It's a fun thing. But people do take it really seriously, uh, and it's kind of this surreal realization we regularly have, where like I like I love what I do. I have a great time. I get to come in and, and do this nonsense with you. Absolutely. Uh, but then also really weird stuff will happen. Like at Comic-Con, we interviewed Gene Simmons of KISS, and he told me I looked like Ace Ventura. Right. And then he talked to us about Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Which is like... Like I did research for an interview with members of KISS about Scooby-Doo. That was a... Like, it's surreal because it's stuff that you were pretty much just as familiar with in third grade. Right. But now we're adults. Like, I'm like, I... I darn it, honey, I, I would be home to, to cook dinner, but I, uh, I, have, to, I have to finish up this report on Star Wars toys. Like that regularly happens. Where I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'll be in bed in a little while, baby, but I can't because I have to uh, play this game where I tie uh, balloons to sheep and send them back to my magical floating village house. Did you tell your wife you're playing a Phantom Pain for work? Yeah, actually, we had a really funny in, uh, encounter last night because she was like, you, wait, when, uh, what do you, what's the name of this? Metal, metal, metal Boy and the, and the Gear Town? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're putting that on the box. Metal Boy and the Gear Town, a Hideo Kojima production. Um, yeah, Max, our, our jobs are really stupid, and something actually even stupider happened this week. We forgot that we booked a clown to come on the show. Yep. We're, we're, get, we're still getting our sea legs with this whole up and so, thing. So, yeah, to sort of preface this, uh, Dropsy the Clown is here. Dropsy the Clown is is an upcoming point and click hug venture. Oh my God! Published by Devolver Digital. Oh, that's really. It's coming September tenth oh, to yes, PC, Mac, and Linux. Very warm. Uh, oh. This is a nightmare. This is kind of a nightmare that you have to. You're giving off the bullet points of the to, game while. We had to send out a warning to the whole company. We had to send out like an email, just being like, "Hey guys, just a heads up." So we accidentally okay. invi invited a clown to the office. So Dropsy the Clown is here. Um, and Dropsy, you can't talk, is that correct? I know that's a mean thing to do to ask someone who can't talk is to answer a question. Uh, so here's, what the, yes. here's what the game looks like yeah, in action if you want to take a look. It's, it's really, really ah! weird. It uh, it's, reminds me a little bit of, uh, you guys remember Putt-Putt? Yeah. I love Putt-Putt. It was uh, a great game. It was a little car. You went around clicking on stuff. 
Uh, Dropsy feels like that if, like, in the same way that you see Macaulay Culkin now and he looks like a literal scarecrow. Yeah, this but he was cute in the, in the early 90s. This it's looks sort of like, like if that. one of the bosses from Beavis and Butthead for Genesis got his own game. Yep, <laughs> fought that's, cops. Yeah. Uh, but you have animal friends that apparently are unable to see with their diminutive vision that clowns are actually terrifying nightmare creatures brought to Earth uh, to, to scare us all. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I said that. He has a rat. He has a rat. He has a, he has a fake... He's petting a fake rat. Uh, Dropsy... Um, what, I guess we can only ask you yes or no questions. Uh, how, are you very excited for your new game? Okay. The Did you walk into you a corner store earlier with your handlers and make children cry? That did happen. That's a real thing that happened. You, so you walked into a, a store today and children started crying. Is he going to poop on you? What is happening? He's going to poop. I think we should... Uh, that's an that's a actual that's a clown move. It's the, it's the poop spin. Yeah, so we actually... We have. Do we have? Is that audio gonna work? I don't know if it's gonna work. We we can tr we can try it out. Sure, come on up. Yeah. Let's give this a shot. This is Stephanie. We actually have a video. Uh, it's very hard to see, but we can probably hear it. You want to hold it up to your microphone? Here. This is what happened with Dropsy. <laughs> that was a candid, candid that's, video. That's of, an uh, actual audio recording of a store that Dropsy entered moments ago. So we're really, relatively, we're keeping it together right now. Oh, you're breathing. It's real. Just take this sandwich and just go. Oh, did you just put a chicken sandwich in your clown pants? Well, he's gone. Oh, that's a great, uh, great trick to get rid of a, a clown. Oh. By the way, is just <laughs> give him a chicken sandwich. Here's a fun fact about that chicken sandwich: it was frozen in the middle. Sorry, Dropsy. Oh man. So well, on a related note, uh, what's another stupid thing that happens around here, Brian? Oh. How do you come back from that? I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Dropsy. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for coming by. Uh, Drop Dropsy is out soon. Do, September 10th. Yes. Ten bucks. It's on PC, Mac, and Linux. It's uh, coming to tablet sometime soon. Yep. Um, soon you'll you'll be able to put if, it on your uh, phone. You can you can put Dropsy in your pants. Yeah. Where you go? Have, have a little Dropsy in your pants. I have a little Dropsy in my pants. After meeting an actual clown on set, uh, that's terrifying. I, my hands are actually physically clammy and cold, and I've and never felt fearful now. I've never felt dampness through clothing when, when <laughs> hugging someone. That was really pretty weird. Yeah, so go check out Drops of the Clown. Uh, we'll have a review on IGN soon, and I'll uh, I'll I'll tweet a picture of my boxer shorts later if you want to see what a Dropsy in the pants looks like. Anyway, things here at IGN uh, are progressively get more and more terrifying. We actually, besides a clown problem here, we also have a small infestation problem. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at that. Uh, up at noon's going great. We just got Van Dams everywhere. What's under this cup? No, don't! Ah! Damn, No! Not on your life. So, yes! Yeah. Th thousands of little Van Dams are all over our office. They might be all over yours, too. Uh, they, they're most known for uh, killing you, mostly in sudden death and other Van Damme film titles that they evoke through their actions. So just like we warned you a few weeks ago to watch out for toilet rats, uh, at the end of the show, please look around your office or your home for thousands of tiny Van Damses, Van Damelses. This is a really, this is a really stupid episode. Yeah, we're just going full time. really weird. It's four uh, weeks. This is the four week anniversary yeah. of, our, of our show. Yeah. And by then, you know, when you're dating somebody by the fourth week, that's when you're allowed to start eating ribs and chicken fingers and, and, no, and just get real sloppy. The first week, it's all, you know, kale salads. Just start going to the bathroom with the door open. Yeah, you can just poop with the door open. Get a little dropsy in your pants. Just whatever wear, you need wear to do. A wear a bathrobe on a yep. date. Uh, so, today, uh, to tomorrow? Tomorrow yeah. is Friday, but it's not just regular Friday. <laughs> it is Force Friday, which is That's the right. day that all of the Force Awakens toys are released. If you go to a Toys R Us or Walmart or whatever, at 12.01 a.m. midnight tonight, tonight, there will be some people There will be some people lined up. You buying maybe. anything? Uh, I don't think I am because we have to go to a wedding tomorrow. We've That's got a, right. we've got a weird busy weekend. Uh, but yeah, basically we got our first look at a whole bunch of toys. Some of them had been sort of leaked online, uh, yep. but we've got this we've got this kind of wrap up. They have an 18 hour global unboxing that that uh, Lucasfilm is doing. That's uh, hosted by our good friend Anthony Carboni. Yeah. Shout out to that man. Yeah, uh, they basically they showed off some some funny things, little costumes for kids. I mean, this isn't just like the collector grade stuff. This is stuff for kids. Yeah. Uh, 
They had uh, micro machines are back, which is kind of crazy to me. One big thing that's really hot is the BB-8 uh, Sphero Droid. Basically, it's an yeah. it's an app controlled uh, remote controlled, or as your cat calls it. <laughs> Yes. This is gonna be terrifying. Uh, uh, I, I kind of want one of those, but I also know I've had a couple of those kind of like remote control toys, uh, like little robots and stuff like that. And after about 15 minutes, they kind of lose their luster. Yeah. But uh, I also have some carpets in my house, uh, kind of terrifying. But these are the cool ones, right? Like these are the uh, these are the black series yeah. figures. Yeah. So I'm actually pretty disappointed because I grew up collecting the four inch, like the three and three quarter inch yeah. uh, Star Wars action figures, and the black series is now like the collector aimed stuff, and they're all six inch, so they're the same size as like Marvel Legends, uh, you know, D DC Direct figures. Uh, generally, kind of more collector size figures, and they're they're cool. I like them, but I kind of want them to play with my old dudes, my old little Star Wars figures. And the only four inch figures they have are like aimed at aimed at little kids, and they're kind of these are these are like some titanium ones or something or other. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of lukewarm about this. However, some really cool stuff did show up. Uh, let's see. Well, there's a Millennium Falcon bed. There's that. Yep. Uh, which do you want? You want to get one of those? <laughs> That's uh, this is such a funny picture. That's really funny. Uh, the Lego the Lego stuff looks great. Uh, we also they, they popped up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Do I even have this on here? I I might have uh, might have to pull this up here. You get some spoilers for what's happening for the rest of the show. That's right. Uh, I want to say uh, Thunderbeast one seventeen says if you don't eat ribs on a first date then GTFO and that means get the farce out or get the force out get which you can do tonight yeah. at midnight. Uh, I'm 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 I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like I should be crazy excited for new Star Wars stuff, but I think I'm also kind of like a little fatigued on what we've seen so far. Uh, the BB-8 does interest me. I think they're it's really you and I have talked about this before, but they make a lot of action figures that are like three feet tall now. You yeah. and I actually got uh, really um, well. We had a lot. We had a little too much fun one afternoon, and we decided to go to Toys R Us and and go toy shopping, where we realized that uh, first of all, nothing has changed since we've grown up. Uh, like He-Man and uh, Lego and Playmobil yeah. and Transformers and Ninja Turtles and X-Men. All those guys are still there. They're all still there hanging out. I mean, no, they're not there hanging out. Their toys are. Uh, they probably come to life at the end of the day. Did they ever do a Toy Story movie about a toy store? Like a No, but they toy did announce uh, 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 another one, another sequel. They did. That's so right. That'll be. So you're gonna say you're gonna save money tonight, right? Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. They mm -hmm. do have some some really high end uh, Star Wars stuff that I just I just found like right before we started this, so I didn't yeah. get a chance to get it in here. I'm sorry about that. But Hot Toys, those guys who have like the three hundred, four hundred dollar like twelve inch action figures, yep. they have some of the new uh, First Order dudes, and they look incredible. Uh, there's also some some Japanese uh, the SH fig arts, which are made by I think Bandai. Yep. Uh, super articulated, really awesome. But unfortunately, they're like forty five bucks a piece. They I got also one of Kylo one. Ren. The, the, the Kylo Ren one's really cool because yeah. like, they're incredibly poseable. But it's weird to sell something so poseable before a movie comes out. And we don't know his poses, which means you can make the toy do a whole bunch of non canonical stuff right now, like you know arms and legs in the air at the same time, like he's falling down a well, or maybe he's doing like a b boy stance type of thing where his sure. arms are crossed and he's doing a split. Because uh, we don't know if he does any of those things in the movie. He might. There might be a 15-minute split scene where Kylo Ren just gets his, you know, his nads re really all lined up with the floor there on the the base of that ship that he's hanging out Stop. on. So anyway, Star Wars toys, uh, they look cool. But Max, yeah, I got together some uh, some real bad ones because there have been some really bad Star Wars toys over the years. Yep. Uh, I if you show me a Star Wars toy between that was released between. 1995 and 2005, there's a good chance I can tell you what it is and where it right. came from. I spent way too much time on websites like Rebel Scum and Yakface.com when I was in high school. Uh, so plug, let's plug, take plug, a look plug, at plug. some of these wonderful toys. Here is a real famous one. A lot of people have passed this around because it's one of the worst toys you could possibly make. It's like, this is what makes dads yell at their kids. What if you're is just, this? This is a Jar Jar Binks lollipop. You're supposed to put that in you your mouth? You are supposed to... Suck on make his tongue? Your, like, there's no way to make this not suggestive. No. You are sucking on Jar Jar Binks' tongue. <laughs> Apparently, this is this was part of, this is a cap candy. Uh, they, it's, it's called, like, Monster Mouths. God, and I, I don't know if this is part of a series that just never took off. You know when you're watching Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, and, and a Guy Fieri's like, I gotta really cock my neck back to fit this whole burger. Like, Jar Jar is doing that. Like, he has dislodged the bottom of his throat to get his <sighs> tongue out to really slip it into a kid's mouth. That is a sentence I just said. Right here at work, live on IGN.com. This is a real toy they made. For, I get for a PG movie. I get physically uncomfortable imagining somebody like a child. I don't know which is worse, a child or an adult <laughs> using one of these. I don't know how much longer I can look at this. Okay, picture. all right. Next Please. up, we've got Whoa! this is famous. This is the 
the monkey monkey Leia, as she's known. <laughs> this was the first modern uh, you- Star Wars figure release. This came out in 1995. Basically, everybody looked like they were on steroids. Uh, pretty much, uh, this is a great find. Kenner put out the kind of the reboot. This was this was as we were approaching the special edition Star Wars. They put these out and like like Han and Lando were all look like muscular. They look like GI Joe Extreme yeah. figures. Did and they, they did didn't they re- even they didn't even try. Did they repaint Luke's arms and then just put boobs on it? Because it looks like he's got very muscular arms. She also has these huge hands that are too big to hold anything that she. It looks like she's Toys trying have to come a really. She's long like, way. hey, you got those uh, big soup cans? <laughs> Can I hold on to some soup cans? This is like, remember in Spaceballs when they're chasing them through the hallway and they turn around and it's their stunt doubles and Princess Vespa has a, a mustache. That's Pretty what much. they look like they made a toy out of. Yeah. Wow. So next up, this is a toy. What is this? This is a toy I actually had. If you grew up in the 90s, you probably, you, remember, you probably remember Koosh Balls, which were like one of those things that you somebody would give you and you weren't really sure what to do with it, but for whatever reason, mostly <laughs> because you were a kid, you never threw it out. You just sort of had it. Yeah. And they, they really, all they did was collect dirt and you'd rip off little pieces of them and then you'd find them like stray hairs. They made Star Wars Koosh Balls, which don't really work because a Koosh Ball, you can throw at somebody and it goes Koosh and it doesn't hurt. If you've got Sebulba <laughs> arms and legs and heads sticking out of it and you throw it, it doesn't really work like a ball anymore. It's no longer a ball. It just looks like Sebulba has some real... It looks like a glitch in a game. Yeah. Also, Sebulba, you have s- super weird legs. Also, you, when you I was, look like a ballerina. When I was trying to find... That's where his arms... Those are his arms down there? His arms are in the bottom. He walks on his arms. Oh, and his feet are yeah, he's front? Yeah, he's a gand. Stop. Um, but yeah, so when I was looking for this picture, I found for, a picture on, for ages three to 137. Yeah, sh- shut up. What's that? Shut up. What's that all about? You give this to a 120 year old man, they'll they'll, they'll, like, they'll die. I like how sad Darth Maul looks looking at Sebulba's koosh butt in this. Photo. He looks like he's trying not to be seen. He's just backing into the darkness. This when was I, a, when this I, was when a bad was, time. When I was for looking us. for this image on Google Images, I came up with a great picture of Sebulba and Jar Jar Binks in the throes of love. <laughs> Some fan art that somebody had lovingly drawn. Really, really graphically. So that was a really great way to start my morning. Yeah. All right. Next up, here's one that was this was <laughs> this was released what towards, is going on? towards the end of the episode one line, and I really have always hated this figure because he just looks like he looks this like a guy a- who's going to try to date your mom. Like if you're at like like on vacation, yeah. like some guy is going to kind of saunter up, and he's like. I know that. Well, this is like billowy Chicago wind tunnel Qui Gon. Like yeah. he's like, I gotta go to this gym, but uh, I it's th- a really windy. T- I think <laughs> if you put his if you put his arms up, it sort of looks like he's in the middle of a fight. They had another one that was like an Obi Wan. They had a Darth Maul that kind of went with it. And you're supposed to put them all together and it all look dynamic, but what's going on with that hat head, that motorcycle hair going on back there? And is that real? What is that? It's the, really just upsetting. That gym tarp material around his uh, crotch. That's area. called soft goods, Brian. That is awful. Finally, we have this one. There which we, we go. We saw this. Funny story about we this. We saw one. this at a Walgreens. <laughs> this is apathetic Anakin. Anakin, right? Yeah, I guess like we could totally like stop the dudes from like the Senate, but like I don't want to. <laughs> we actually, you and I were in a uh, we were in a Walgreens in Seattle, about a half a block from the Space Needle, and you were incredibly <sighs> sick this week. Yeah. After Pax, after all the Pax kissing you did. Yep. And. Um, me and Mitch Dyer, IGN employee, were running around and, and uh, Marty Sleva, and we picked this thing up and we could not stop laughing at I was space. waiting in line silently with a bunch of other adults and I hear hooting and guffawing and giggling from you idiots. Yeah. And then you come around the corner while I'm just about to go in, in a line to pay for a bunch of cough medicine and and you come up to me and you're like, hey, hey Max, you should you should buy this. And you hand me a souvenir mug that says Gone Squatchin' and has a picture of a Sasquatch on it. Because he's so, really big up there. Moral so of the that story actually, is... It, it, it makes more sense to find a Gone Squatchin' mug uh, in, in Seattle, where a home of the Sasquatch, than it does to find an Anakin Skywalker action figure in 2015 in an actual store. There's really, like, when you go to uh, Walgreens, they don't really have the most robust toy section. They only have a few things. So to see this guy sitting there, uh, just unbelievable to me. Yep. So also, that's I love it. that it says, includes lightsaber. Like, that's some kind of wonderful bonus for a Star Wars action figure. Yeah, that's All right, it. What do we got? what do we got next on that? Very awful. Uh, we, we talked a little bit before about um, about our jobs and how they're weird. Uh, and I, I didn't want to complain about my job because I want to really just show that there are people out there who have way worse jobs than us. So we threw it to social. We said, hey, use the hashtag up at noon. Let us know what the worst thing about your job is. Um, Lee, Lee Gowaddle says, our commute, numbing boredom, and idiots. Course. That is the biggest problem in any workplace is idiots. I have one specifically that I have to spend a lot of time with that just really does not, he just does not fit in. You're talking about Mitch? 
Yeah. <laughs> Mitch Dyer. Suck it, uh, Mitch. Jesse Spanner says, I'm at work while Metal Gear Solid is at home. In there lies the problem. That's actually the problem we're all dealing with this week. Uh, I, I don't know how we're going to get through that. We're just going to keep running through this episode. Uh, and Crystal Like that's at Crystal Like says, not being able to nerd out about games with my coworkers. Hey, so we, that is we have that. That is the best thing about this job. Is even yeah. when it's pouring rain and the the train is delayed and I don't there, I, there's something I don't want to do at work and I'm just I'm being a big baby. I come in and I get to hang out with cool people like Brian. So that's right. Extremely grateful for that. Uh, one, um, of the, one of the things we weren't so nerdy out, out about today was the uh, the Deus Ex pre-order yeah. story. Yeah. Right? So Deus Ex Mankind Divided. They did this weird thing where they announced the uh, it's like he's looking at collector's us. edition or they I think it's the regular edition. Basically, if you pre-order. Like, if you pre-order the game, if enough people pre-order the game, you unlock more pre-order bonus content. Yep. Which is, like, they borrowed a model from, like, Kickstarter or Patreon, which is, like, that's usually done by, you know, indie games. And it sort of makes sense in that in that way. This is yep. a, you know, a multi-million dollar triple-A game from a respected IP published by a major, major publisher. That's right. With lots of marketing behind it. So to have this, like, carrot kind of held in front of the audience being like, oh, hey... If you pre-order enough, we'll so, give you this. And, and I've talked about this on, on our, our, our one of our other shows here, Podcast Beyond. Uh, first of all, pre-ordering. It's kind of a weird, sketchy uh, holdover from the 80s and 90s. It still happens, and a lot of con- good content is held behind that pre-order wall. Uh, and that kind of bums me out. I don't really think it's necessary. I think that if you agree to buy a game in the $60 la- window, anytime that game is still $60, you should get all the stuff that, that was supposed to come with it. Um, if, if you buy it for 30 it should drop down. But I actually pitched an idea, which was basically uh, let people pick their own sort of uh, pre-order bundles. So if you want a collector's edition of something, you should be able to get this, this, and this, 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 and this. But the way this one is tiered is that each tier has three things, and you only get one of them. And they keep moving so, on so to the next out. thing this the is, next thing. This is the collector's edition, but it includes all of the rewards from the augmented pre-order yeah. thing, which is sort of like... I, <sighs> If you pay a whole bunch of money, you get everything that we sort of told you you might get if enough people did the thing we asked you to. That's right. And on top of that, it's just another it's just another collector's edition, you know? I mean, it's cool, I guess. Like a, a nine-inch Adam Jensen figurine. Uh, my whole thought with, with with collector's editions is that, like, if why don't you just buy the game and then buy, like, a nice collectible on the side? Yeah. I mean, I, that's, I, I feel that way about a lot of things. It's just sort of like, hey, maybe pick out your own thing. Like, pick out your own shirt. Yeah. You don't pick out yeah. your own statue. Like, buy a game and then go buy a really cool statue for your desk. Uh, anyway, collector's editions, uh, they are, they're running the world right now. But, Max, do you know what I'm tired of? What's that, Brian? All these boring, exhausting video game collector's editions. They're just the same every time, and I'm just so tired of them. Me too, Brian. And that's why these collector's editions need to wake up and get stronger. Why, what are you suggesting, Max? I'm suggesting that video game collector's editions go extra Extra strength. strength! Are you tired of collector's editions that don't cater to real collectors? Are you totally over art books, steel books, and other custom limited edition crap? We'll make way for ultra mega extra strength collector's editions for hardcore fans! A Pip-Boy phone case to commemorate Fallout 4? That's cool, I guess, but what about a limited edition one kilogram cylinder of genuine weapons grade plutonium? Sure, you say you're pumped about Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, but only a real fan would buy a copy that comes with a one-way ticket to Afghanistan, a live horse, and a procedure to have your own hand actually amputated. Everyone loves Mario, but do you love Mario enough to buy this copy of Super Mario Maker that includes the original Mario Maker Shigeru Miyamoto himself? Do you? Ultra Mega Extra Strength Collector's Editions for hardcore fans are available for pre-order today. Some of these options might not be exactly legal, but unless you're a total casual, you don't care. Ultra Mega Extra Strength Collector's Editions for hardcore fans are available everywhere for pre-order today. If you have to ask where, you're probably not a real fan. You're right, Max. Extra Strength Collector's Editions are better. And so are branded segments. Brought to you by 5 Hour Energy. And we're back! Uh, of all the things we've done on the show, I think the thing we're going to get the most in trouble for is giving Shigeru Miyamoto that gun. <laughs> that was weird. And letting him just 
shoot up the sky like it's nothing. That he doesn't seem like the type of guy to do that. Not so much. Not really a gun guy. Um. So yeah, one thing uh, that got announced recently: Street Fighter Five is around the corner. Comes out next spring is right. fall. What's the, the 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 fall of the winter, which is the early the spring one. Otherwise, I'm, what am I saying? I'm holiday tired. one, the prequel. Uh, Street Fighter Five is coming for holiday out. Holiday two. Bunch of new stuff's coming with it. You get some new costumes. They they gave uh they gave. Ken, a weird scuba diving shirt for yep. some reason, and uh, but these guys have been wearing the same clothes for decades. Yeah, now. they gotta switch it up. They showed off some new designs, which are, I think are sort of speaking of pre-order bonuses. I think they're pre-order bonuses. One of them that really cracks me up is there's this new version of Ryu called Hot Ryu. Yeah. So let's take a look at this. Uh, a lot to unpack in this image. Mm-hmm. Man. Okay. So, you know when people post MySpace photos and they're like, "Yo, here's me with my gun collection, <laughs> all my money." And my drugs, and it's just like they're in their bedroom, and it's like, why don't you have a nicer bedspread? You know, this reminds me of that, but if you were crazy and lived in like the jungle, he's got an iguana on a log back there, and like Street Fighter is a game that's so fast that you don't really get a chance to see yeah. what's happening in the background. This is absolutely a like a '90s Fabio romance novel cover that you would see at the the super supermarket when you're with your mom, and you're like, I want to get a nice X Men comic, and your mom just like picks up one of those and gives it a look because she's thinking about it because she's not getting the kind of action she used to get at home. I just I don't get like you think that Ryu doing all bunch of karate moves out in the out in the woods they, he'd scare off that auk that's yeah. staring at him or whatever that, what, yeah, like you, that you cockatiel? pointed out the most important amazing thing about this image is that is that lizard it's just an iguana that's just with his hanging. tail sticking straight out this is this is hilarious I think I, I think that's my new favorite thing is it's like a, the Where's Waldo game of Street Fighter screenshots yeah. anyway the obvious big glaring thing right here is that he has a beard yeah. and it makes him look like Ron Swanson. So we asked you guys at home to Photoshop some beards onto video game characters. Let's take a look at what you did. Yeah. Uh, so we got Terrence Aww. Wiggins says, Hot Mega Man X. God, that is so great. He looks I really like, a, like that. It, with his little tiny nose, he just looks like a little mouse. It's kind of cute. Who's the guy, uh, the co-host on uh, Tool Time? Oh, yeah, right, So Bowen. now we've got uh, Addison slash Crackety J. What's up, Addison? <laughs> Uh, we got Clementine with a beard. I have a highly uncomfortable image right here. There's a lot of problems here. I think um, I would not. I don't think I would go out of my way to protect this person. As I much don't. You'd be like, what are you? What, why are you disguising yourself so poorly? Absolutely nauseating. This is so cute. This is really adorable. That I works. Like we went with the art style here too. It's got that very clean cut uh, beard kachu. That's from Terrence, Terrence Wiggins again. Um, just a nightmare. But I really like this, and especially the rosy cheeks underneath. Looks weird with the cheeks like that. Yeah. Though. Oh, this one's great. That's real good. I it's, like that. How does this? How does this person talk with that thing in front? He of doesn't him? talk. He's got. It's. It's a great way to cover up that terrifying metal jaw he has. Yeah. Like Raiden's got all that weird cyborg stuff going on. He'd look like. He'd look like a nice. Uh, like a cool nutcracker mm -hmm. if he had that instead of covering it up. Oh boy. Ryan Marshall made uh, ET. I like how he didn't even go pixel art with this. You made one of the worst games worse. <laughs> Congrats. Yep. Yep. I, I want to talk about his background image too. I believe I believe love. Love I yeah. Love I believe I believe. What is love. going on here? I don't know. All right. Well, thank you guys for submitting. Uh, we usually dump a stupid Photoshop cue on on one of our Twitters on Wednesday yep. or so. So follow I, us I on there. I was on asked Max, to stop Keith calling Brian. that. Uh, not our names on there. I was asked to stop calling that homework by a lot of you. I, I understand that that word evokes a lot of terror and fear. I got to say one of the. Oh wait, we got one more here. Oh yeah, what do we got? It's oh, this is the best one. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Beer Raider. Yeah. Look at that. Bear Raider right there. Oh. Man. Unsettling. Just incredibly unsettling. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we put those Photoshop things out. Uh, they're, I, well, they're not even requests. Let's, it's just a game. It's a fun game. I can't call them homework because this is that time of year. This is that late August, early September time of year. Where you start hearing the word homework and back to school and you get terrified. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I am... I gotta say, if you're in school right now and you're talking, you're thinking about it, this is the worst time of your life, it gets so much better. You actually do reach a point in your life. Like right now, I saw a back to school commercial the other day, I didn't even blink. It didn't phase me, I didn't get jitters, I didn't get cold or nervous. I didn't think about that smell of that of the going into a Staples and getting the three ring binder and then having the teacher tell you that it's the wrong style. And then it breaks after two weeks and all the rings get all screwed up and your papers become a mess and you get kicked out and you gotta go to summer school and you clean toilets for the rest of your life and you get a failed comedian comedy job over here at IGN.com you sit here with this tall handsome guy and you have to talk about garbage every single week just to get paid it gets so much better than going back to school every single year one day you get to be happy just like us yeah 
That's uh, cool. Yeah, so we talked about Street Fighter a little bit. Brian, you got a chance to play some Street Fighter. How'd that work out? Yeah, you know, while my uh, self-esteem is about right here, let's get it right down underneath the table. Yeah, I went get to it PAX in there. this weekend, uh, and I met a man named Combo Fiend. Combo Fiend is a professional Street Fighter player. This guy plays for 10 hours a day. I don't know how. I asked him uh, a very simple question. I was like, how many times have you, have you heard the word Hadouken? <laughs> Because it's probably billions. Uh, so we, I went, I got a, I got on a plane, and in front of a large crowd of people, I played Combo Fiend in Street Fighter to see if I could even get a hit on this man. Um, let's see what happened. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Brian Altano. I'm here with Peter, aka Combo Fiend. What's going on? Professional Street Fighter. Uh, I'm, I'm not good at Street Fighter. I'm gonna get that out of the way right now. All right, I want you to bring your best. Do not hold back at all on me right now. Really? Just really bring it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what you got. Okay. Okay. Pretend this is like for you know a million dollars at the Street Fighter World Championships. Okay. Okay. Oh. What was that? Yo. I'm sorry. Perfect K. I don't want to do this. Don, I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> Longer versus Fawaz. That was a beatdown. Peter, thank you so much. Right, right. Brian Altano here, and please go easy on me in the comment section. I'm really bad at Street Fighter. Uh, you were playing as Chun Li there, yeah? Yeah, she's. Re you're not. You're not great. Here's the thing. You're not great at the game. I was having, so I brought actually, uh, I accidentally brought a, a, the, uh, the Super Nintendo controller and I, it didn't plug in, so I just had Was a, it, I don't, yeah, I don't think any controller was plugged. I don't, I, were you even holding a controller? Okay, you know, like, it, this is the thing. You don't have to be great at video games to work at this job. You really don't. You, you just, if you're, if you're pr decent enough on camera, uh, I'm sure the comments right now are telling me I'm not even that. Uh, Street Fighter is a hard game. That's when you're going up against a professional. Got to put a push a whole lot of different buttons to make anything happen. That's right. And Chun Li, you know, very wonderful woman. I you. Yeah. All right. So not uh, a good not a good look. Okay, not a good look for me. I don't, I don't really know how to get out of that. Just all right. Just real bad. Cool. Uh, so Street Fighter and games yep. weren't the only thing going on at PAX, and it's not all fun. There's some bad stuff going down too. What happened? Uh, okay? We've got a we've got a, a a little a little on the on the street report coming in. Let's take a look. Anyone who's been to PAX can tell you that one of the big draws to this convention is the presence of beanbag chairs. They're very comfortable. Lots of people like to sit in them, but unfortunately, not all is right in the world of beanbags. No, folks, that's right. Plopping seems to be a major problem this year. Local authorities have put up signs warning against plopping, saying "Mr. Sadbag wants you not to plop" or "Stop the plop." And hopefully those signs will put an end to this serious epidemic. Back to you. Yeah, I don't know why we did that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of pulled our camera guy aside. I was like, hey, I got a stupid idea. And then we f I forgot we shot it. Also, I'm pretty sure the thing is that those things just soak up germs and then people yep. plop and then it goes in the air and then it goes in my face. Uh, that that, that camera guy actually broke his thumb the next day. Yeah. And that was it. So basically... A, a whole day of his life was designated to shooting stupid things with us, and then then he went to the hospital. That's the, you know, life is life is really a, a really tragic musical sometimes. Um, so I'm a big Nintendo fan. Obviously, uh, if if you couldn't tell, uh, I talk about them every single week on this show. Uh, the Nintendo 3DS. Hey, look at that! It's Reggie Fizeme. That's my father from another. Uh, nothing really rhymes with that word. Um, the new 3DS is coming to America, uh, just like that Eddie Murphy movie. I bought a 3DS XL, the new 3DS XL, last year, or this year, whenever it was, because uh, instead of putting out the two varieties like they did in Europe, in Japan they only put out one, the XL. But the one that I really wanted has faceplates that you can switch out. You're just going to blow your nose on the show like that? I'm sorry, I'm very sick. This is horrible. You all right? No, I mean, I'm all right. It's What's just, going you know, on? I've got a stuffy nose. I'm a sniffly boy. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right, but I'm just sick, you know? I'm just We're doing wondering. a live show. This is, this is a hard thing I'm, to do. I, like, as a friend, I'm asking you, no, I know. how are things? Thank you guys for, for putting up with us. It's been a weird week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, things are all right. You good? Yeah. It's got a snot. I mean, look, look, this guy's a billionaire. He can wait. I, I'm checking in on my friend right now. Are you all right? Are you sick? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you coming out I, of it? I'm sick. I'm, yeah. I think I'm in that, that spot where it sounds worse, but I'm getting better. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I hosted the Daily Fix today, and it was just like I had to stop between takes and just make it sound like I had just tuberculosis. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah. Is this, good, is this like when a teacher's like, "No, I'll stop. I'll wait." You were gonna finish that conversation back there? Well, you're, is that you were passing a note from your nose to that tissue. <laughs> yeah, I wrote boogers. That's what I wrote on there. <laughs> anyway, friendship lasts forever. The new 3DS is coming to America. It's smaller. It's got face plates that you can swap out. That's the big thing. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, what kind of face plates you want to see on your 3DS? Uh, you will be able to buy these, but I don't think they sell blank ones just yet that you can customize. But like all cool things, like you know, there's like kid robots. There's even uh, the uh, Funko Pops. Like they sell blank versions of them that you can customize. So uh, do you want to pull up a picture? Yeah, I pulled of, up of, a few of the face plates. I'm trying to find a, a good a good picture. Of these. We can can we cut to the world's tiniest image? Yeah, here's of, a real these, here's a real of, little one. Here's a real, and I want you to squint. If you're on your phone right now. Um, you're you're probably gonna go blind looking at this. Let's take a look. What website is this? Where are you? You're on IGN.com. Yeah, great. This is such good, a small picture. Yeah, okay, so here we go. you can use your little imagination there. There we go. So we have all yeah. these different face plates. Uh, so we actually have a template, right? Is that what's going on here? I think that's the idea. You get like certain certain sizes. You can slap some stuff on there. Mm -hmm. I like. So I've been holding off on getting a 3DS. I don't have a 3DS. Uh, my girlfriend had one for a while, and mm -hmm. she she lost it. Um, I've been like, I'm, I'm going to wait until that final version comes out. And they, yep. they came out with a new one. Now it seems like they're probably going to be having a new thing coming out pretty soon. But at this point, the 3DS has an awesome library. There's a ton of stuff on there. But I really like that faceplate idea. I like. I want to be able to paint stuff on there. I want to paint a Crash Bandicoot on there just to mess things up. Yep. The wallpaper on my Vita is different Pokemon. Just because I like to be contrary with my... My messaging there. Uh, Shifts on Twitch says, I like the guy in the background wearing a suit playing a 3DS. Hey, man, welcome to Earth. That's Reggie fils -Aimé, Okay? That's the inventor of the big New Yorker pizza at Pizza Hut. Okay? That's the, that's the co-invent, the co-creator of Pop-Up Video. Pop-Up Video. Yeah. That guy... It's a good show. Do you know what this guy... This guy shows up to places, he makes the biggest thing, and then he leaves. Except for Nintendo, where he's, he's, he's actually stuck around for quite a long time now. But he's great. He's a, he's a very public figure. He's kind of a, a, a character that, they've all, that they then made president, which is, I think, what Donald Trump is trying to do right now. Uh, so there's a lot going on in the world of video games. Use the hashtag up at noon. Let us know what kind of faceplate you would want to display in public. Um, keep in mind, you can just really abuse that and scare people. So let us know what you want to do. Yeah, and if you want to, uh, you want to get a little bit more invested than that, why don't you do a little weird Photoshop? Make, make a mock-up of your ideal your ideal uh, 3DS, and uh, uh, send that to us on Twitter using the hashtag up at noon. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the show that uh, last time I was playing Metal Gear Solid, and my wife called it Metal Boy in the Gear Town. Uh, Alex Hirsch already made the cover art for that, and it's great. Can we take a look at my computer here? Can we pop on over? Here it is, Metal Boy in the Gear Town. This looks like uh, a weird uh, corn album that never came out. I really like what's going on here. This is a really beautiful thing. He's not happy to be there. The Metal Boy is very did just, sad. Did he just search Metal Boy in the Gear Town and this guy's album came I up? Because I think know. that's sort of what that is. I don't know. Speaking of old MySpace photos, this is definitely one of them. I went to, I went to so much, high Alex. school with people who had album covers like that. It was a good time back yeah. when people made albums. That's right. Uh, so the cool thing about the new uh, 3DS is that it's being bundled in two separate places. Uh, one of them is on GameSpot, or GameStop, not GameSpot, there are there are friends slash competition. They live up the street. I actually like those people. I'm supposed to hate them because they're our competitors. But you know, it's, it's kind of like the McWhopper. I like uh, getting together with them and making gross stuff and putting going inside people's mouths. <laughs> What do you do? Like, how uh, does that work? <laughs> so, uh, the is new like 3DS... A it's, it's like unhinging your jaw, but just the stuff besides common sense erupts Oh, when I there. talk? Yeah. There is absolutely no reason on earth that anybody with any sort of seniority or power should have given someone like me you know a live like, vessel to ride in people once can, a week. People can, like, dislocate their shoulders, and they're just like, oh, I can pop it out of my socket. I feel like you do that with your whole brain. I do do that with my whole brain. And speaking of which, I'm about to do that in a minute about a little game called Animal Crossing. Now, Animal Crossing comes bundled with a new 3DS. Um, it's actually called Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. I've been around the office calling it Animal Crossing House Arrest because I thought that you couldn't leave your house in that game. So I thought it was sort of like a Lindsay Lohan, uh, you know, uh, furniture rearranging simulator where occasionally she gets a call from, from Disney and uh, they're like, absolutely not. You will not yeah. be in her love book I got a, a picture of this, of this cute dog. It looks like... It doesn't. What's that dog's name? What's the do name of That's the dog? That's Isabel. Isabel doesn't. Yeah. She, normally, she's got a little body, but it looks like she's just a regular dog poking out of a yep. picnic basket. I actually want to tell a quick story. That one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me here at IGN was it was during E3, and I was looking at a lineup of all the Animal Crossing amiibo, and uh, which are all different characters. And the good thing about Animal Crossing, as you can see, is the first word is animal, not dog. 
There's a lot of different creatures in that game. And Naomi Kyle, host of The Daily Fix, very wonderful woman, came up behind me and she said, who are all these dogs? <laughs> they all so, do look like dogs. They all do look like dogs. They look like weird, colorful dogs made of different kinds of candy. But Max, you, you, you've never played an Animal Crossing game. Yeah, I've kind of been, I was always sort of just not, I didn't get it, you know? Like I didn't yeah. really, I just, it was one of those things I never knew anybody who had it. I never knew anybody who was, who was really crazy into does it. This, does this not look like the most fun thing in the world to you? Like what's going like, on? I don't, I can't tell enough we what's going this, on there know, to really, to kind of. Fedora detective guy but showing you, up like, and interrogating so these One of animals. my favorite things in life is when people explain stuff to me that I don't really understand, but they okay. like, they manage to kind of just boil it down. Yep. Uh, like I had a friend who once gave me a rundown of every single Planet of the Apes movie, but really? like he really just summed it up, and he's like, "So the seventh one, they form a monkey <laughs> congress," and I'm like, "Really?" And it's like, "I don't." That's, have to that's sit really through. amazing because those get very convoluted. Yeah, like he he just he summarized them all really quick, like yeah. rapid fire, and it was like it made it more digestible and it made it interesting. And I realized that if I sat down and tried to watch him, it wouldn't work so much. Okay. Animal Crossing is kind of a similar way where you have to kind of you have to go through some cutesy tutorials and you got to kind of really invest some time into it. But you tell me these stories about it that make me want to just get in there. That's right. So, so here, why don't you tell me a little bit about what Animal Crossing is Here we is go. About. Um, this is completely unscripted. I'm going to do this off, off the top of my head. Here's what Animal Crossing is. Animal Crossing begins with a boy or a girl on a train. And the first thing that happens to you on this train that no one else is on but you is that a cat comes up to you with no face. Now a cat will come up to you and talk to you and say to you, uh, who are you? Where are you coming from? And you basically start telling him, I'm moving to this town. And he goes, what's the name of the town? And then you make up the name of the town on the fly. So you can just be like, I'm going to Buttville. And then you start going to, he goes, oh, Buttville, that's the next stop. Which is basically like a fever dream. So then he goes, hey, are you happy about this? Are you, are you glad or whatever? And the way you answer those questions develop your personality, which also develops the way your face looks. And your face could look like this happy guy, or you could look like a nightmare drowsy boy like mine always does. So then you get to this town, right? The second you get there, this raccoon comes up to you, and he's real feral looking, real gross. He's got an apron on. And he goes, hey, man, do you want to live in this town or what? And you go, absolutely. And he goes, cool. I got this crappy little shanty over here that I want you to live in. So you go into it, you walk out, and you go, that's pretty cool. And he goes, all right, awesome. You owe me 500 thousand dollars. You go, that's crazy. And he goes, okay, you get a job with me. You can work at my place. We'll work this out. You go to his place. You start planting flowers and you go door to door in people's houses, to towns, in the house, in the town. There's all, all these different homes and there's people with animals. They live inside the homes and they can talk. So the problem is, it's a 24-hour clock. So anytime you play the game, it's that time in real life. So if you play in the middle of the night, nobody's up. So you go up to this Betty, Betty's house, and she's this purple uh, you know, hippopotamus. You knock on her door. You go, yo, Betty, what's up? Wake up. Get up, Betty. I'm trying to talk to you right now. Betty, open your damn door. And Betty opens up the door, and she goes, what the hell do you want? It's the middle of the night. And you go, you got any furniture? And she goes, yeah, I got this couch. Get out of here. So she gives you a couch, you take it back, you put it in your house. By now, you're selling furniture, you're selling sea seashells, you're finding plants and bugs, you're, you're just pawning all this stuff out, right? You're like bubbles on the wire, right? You're just getting in and getting all that copper wire and just making money off of it. Really take care of the whole thing. Then you take this money, you bring it back to Tom Nook, the raccoon, and his store that he works at gets bigger and bigger. Eventually, it becomes a 7-Eleven. Then it becomes a department store. When it gets to be two floors, he hires two children, illegally, his nephews, Timmy and Tommy, and they come in, they work the place while he's out there making money getting that Skrilla, getting that paper. So you get money, you sell things to him, your house gets bigger and bigger, eventually you become the mayor. You run the town, every animal in the, in the entire town has to wake up when you knock on their doors. They gotta listen to you. If you don't like them, you go up in the head to them and you hit them in the head with a net. You put potholes in the floor and you push them into it. You get them real hurt, you beat the crap out of them, you steal their furniture, you what? steal their money, you take over the town, and you become the animal king of Animal Crossing. And that's how Animal Crossing works. I really, I really should probably play an Animal Crossing game. You should. But in the meantime, right. we played a better game called Ultimate Chicken Horse. What's up with that? Roll the clip. Show it! Hello everybody, welcome to the Up and New Challenge. Uh, we're gonna play Ultimate Chicken Horse today. This is a game I saw at PAX, it was in the Indie Mega booth. It's a little indie game. Uh, basically, it is a competitive platforming game where you design the levels kind of on the go. And you play as animals, which I really like. The best uh, animals. I will be playing as the raccoon. I'm going to play as the horse. This is great because we get to we get to be our spirit, our spirit These animals are here. These are our favorite animals. So let's, play, let's check out the rooftops. I haven't actually checked out this level. So let's get into this. How does this game work? So uh, basically the idea is that somebody has to win and somebody has to lose in order for anybody to get points. Okay, and what's the goal? You're trying to get to this flag over here. There's a flag just over on this end of the thing. It's very basic platforming, but the platforming is kind of made up as you go along. Okay. By how you place 
these little these little thingies here. And you All right. Wanna, you so I put wanna... down the oil drum. You went for the other thing. I'm gonna win this level right now. <laughs> yeah, you are. See, I died. Oh, oh both died. horse suicide. Equicide. Self self induced equicide. Wow, they gave us a real hoot back yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lot of great noises. Uh, I like when you when you start this game up. This is uh this is on PC. We've got an early access code. I think this is probably coming to Steam early access at some point. Here we got some saw blades and stuff. Uh, this was a little Kickstarter, darling. Um, but yeah, when you when you load the game up, it basically gives you graphics options, and one of them it's. it's I won. Like, yeah, you did. But apparently that was uh kind of was too easy. Still. Too Nobody easy. Won. Yeah, you had to you had to mess me up. Oh, so can I can I kill you? Oh, there's bombs. Okay. That's good to know. I don't know what the... I mean, the bombs are to destroy something else. I kind of regret we both we both took that. Now I got the spring. Okay, I'm going to blow up that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. Um, so now we're racing again. Can I punch you or anything? You're really bad. I'm really bad at platforming. So I don't have any attack so you're options. Gonna get, yeah, right? no, you just, you just have to use the level design against me. So what our, our challenge today is to win... In the in the ultimate chicken horse game. Correct. To win. Okay. I don't know what that is. What is that, John? What's that? It's a crossbow. Oh man. <laughs> ah! So close. Nailed it. Good job, horse. Great horse. Probably so one yeah, of the best you're better at this. This is this game gets really crazy when you get four people in here. It's got up to four people who can who can play in it. Uh, what does the hay do? Do I do I stop a, to eat that like a good I old horse? I think the hay is just a thing to jump on, but I don't know what to do with this. And you can block my stuff. Well, you can chop up that. Uh, there you go. I just leave it. Just mess to see what that does. Yep. All right, horse versus raccoon. Oh! 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 Damn it. Oh! Huh. Oh, what a sad dead horse that was. Huh. See? Why do they play a monkey noise? The pendulum noise? swings both ways, Brian. You're... Shut up. <laughs> Why do they play a monkey noise in Ultimate Chicken Horse? Because I think... Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know why I pick you in the bomb. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow up this... Uh... I just put that there. I like the last time we did this. It was fun. Oh no! Oh, nice work. Catching up. He's got a good dance. A good victory dance as a raccoon. Yeah. Raccoons uh, are known to dance in trash. This is a George R. R. Martin novel. It's actually his name stands for George Raccoon Raccoon Martin. True. He does not like a horse in his in his books, though. No, he kills horses. Yes. All the time. Okay, so this is actually getting to be a little nightmarish. I see what's going on. Yeah. And now imagine that you're playing with. Well, did you win? I won. You're the ultimate horse. I'm the ultimate horse. I did it. So that's uh, ultimate chicken horse. Ultimate chicken horse. We didn't get to see any chickens. Well, there he is. There's the chicken. There's a sheep. It's a farm. A shared controller. I guess you can couch. just dance by pressing Y. That's kind of cute. Oh, let's see a horse dance. All right. Say so ultimate chicken horse. You're, you're the ultimate horse. Do you feel better now? Yeah, I just wanted to hump you. Please stop. Getting all that horse stuff all over you. You already won. Isn't this? Isn't that enough? Horse humpers. Big old deep horse humps. All night long. Over, all over that raccoon. Dirty horse dancing. Filthy, dirty, late night. Horse. Thanks for watching, everybody. Dirty, decrepit, filthy, disgusting, bumping horse. I'll stop. I'm sorry. This has been a weird hour of our yeah. lives. I'm so happy about this. Yeah. Max, you had a weird uh, encounter the other day. You went to PAX. I want to share a video that we did. Much like the one about plopping, here's a little something else I prepared. I got to meet a, uh, a someone I'm a big fan of. Somebody you've been looking up to for years. One of my heroes. Years. One of yeah. my role models. Let's check it out. I'm Max Scoville, and I'm at PAX Prime. I want to meet Pikachu. I hear he's here, and I want to go see Pikachu. I'm gonna go find Pikachu! Pika! Pika! I'm meeting Pikachu. Pika! I can see Pikachu from here. He's all the way over there. That's just a hat based on Pikachu. Pika! It's 
right there. He's right over there. Those are cars. That's not Pikachu. They even have a picture of Pikachu over by Pikachu. Look at how great he is. I love him. I would just love Pikachu. Where is he? Pikachu! God! Pika! Pika! <laughs> I made Pikachu! Hello? Pika! It's so nice to meet you! Pika! I love your little nose! I got to meet Pikachu. I love doing what I do. Right here on IGN. Yeah, so I want to just give a little insight into that video. Um, I was sort of faking the enthusiasm up until I actually got to meet that thing in person, and it's really, really cute. Like, it just kind of broke part of my brain, so. I, I have uh, two reactions. It's like inflatable, so it's like a little, little like. Number one, you laugh in that video like you're being dubbed in an anime. Yeah. And number two, that's a sort of preview of what it would look like to send Mark Wahlberg to a video game event. I see all these Pikachus here. There's all these Pikachus. There's all these trees. There's, there's, toxic, there's toxicity in the trees. We've got to watch out. <laughs> see, I want to know what Mark Wahlberg thinks about Pokemon now. What do you think he does? I feel like he'd probably give a really, just a really angry answer. Just let's, let's hear an impression of Mark Wahlberg playing Pokemon. I don't know why you'd ask me about those little animals. <laughs> My kids play that game. I don't have any interest in it. I'm in the Transformers films. Uh, so I gotta go on a um, treadmill. Uh, we asked, we went on, on Twitter and we asked you which video game character you want to hang out with. Uh, Emiliano Andrew Jesenson. There's no one on earth that has ever said your name right on the first side. I'm sorry. Andre Jesenson. Just impossible. Uh, that's Emmy Andre 83. I would legally change my name to that if I were you. Uh, Nathan Drake. Oh, it's fun ahead. I could not uh, disagree more. You will die if you hang out with Nathan, Nathan Drake. No one around him lives. Nobody. Except for the old man, Sully, and uh, Elena, who are constantly mad at him because he just basically puts their lives in peril. He's to a get bad a, decision maker. To get some trinket that you can get at Pier 1 Imports. It's ridiculous. Uh, Geek Pop says, Mario, we are tight. Like bros. Yeah. Not going to ask. I'm going to let that sit. Mario's right, like right a 40-something-year-old plumber. I mean, he's pretty old. He's an old plumber. Yeah, he's well, like a, he'd be like, I don't want to do it. I've got to work all week. I want to sit and watch my old movies. <laughs> he'd he'd go down tired. to like a barber shop and hang out with the barber and just talk about soccer all day. I want to go to bed. All uh, right, so um, we're winding things down. Uh, before we go, there's one more thing that I want to talk about with you guys, and that, of course, is Avatar. It's time for Avatar. Welcome back to Avatar. It's time to talk about Avatar no, together. It's my favorite part that. of the show. Nope. James Cameron's Avatar is a fine is a fine film. A there's no don't... there's not even any news. There's not even fake news. There's not real news. There's no Avatar. There's no Avatar. There's no James Cameron. There's no Blue Tiger. There's no underground beluga dude. There's no stupid tree that falls over. The movie sucks. It's bad. I don't care what we gave it at IGN. I'll probably get a phone call after this from our LA team and they'll be like, we actually kind of liked it. You're wrong. I'm sorry. I don't want to get it, go against our people here. Avatar is a bad film. It is a poorly made film. It's also about four and a half hours long. It feels like drowning in 3D glasses. It shouldn't exist. They shouldn't make a sequel. Avatar sucks. Avatar sucks. And I hate you, Max. James Cameron invented an Stop! entire camera system to make the world of Pandora real. This is like, it's like you got hit in the head with a brick. This concludes Avatar for this week. Are we we'll done? Be, We're done? Are we free? We'll be back next week with even more Avatar. No, we won't. We'll never be back with Avatar again, and that's a Brian Altano promise. Okay. Well, that was up at noon. Yeah. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in on IGN, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, using the hashtag up at noon. Keep the conversation going all week long. Uh, I want to give a big special thank you to our sponsors, uh, Five Hour Energy, for allowing us to do the show all month. Uh, and our wonderful bear, uh, Bartholomew the Bear, who's just been sitting still for four weeks straight. I'm a little worried about him. He might not be as alive as I thought he was at the top of the month. But we're going to power through this. We also have a squirrel. It's been a good time. Yeah. Um, as we always like to do... Max, thank you so much for doing this show with us yeah. today. I know you're sick. This has been hard. Next week, we will be in better shape. Yep. Right after this, you got some people who are not sick with diseases or with weird other problems. Uh, they're going to be live streaming Metal Gear Solid Five. They might have problems. We They've don't. possibly unlocked some weird, crazy things, and they yeah. can do some fun times. So stick around for that. On that note, um, it's time for more bears. 
Can't ever get enough bears. Let's head on over to Animal Landfill and look at some bears futzing around in the pool. These bears are going at it. Look at them. This is my favorite. Oh my god, I love this. Well, who needs kids when you can have this many bears in your backyard? Uh, they are really just trashing the joint. Oh. 